you know, we see the problems with trying to go for impeachment uh, right now, but the poo-pooing the idea of accountability for the president, I think, is highly problematic. And it's come up in the context of this um, college admissions uh, scandal where, you know, um, in some ways that's the uh, the 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 subtext is making it to the text. Right. Like where, you know, the subtext is we have a deeply flawed Unmerit, you know, merit-based system. We we like to pretend it's merit-based when we talk about uh, our society, but the reality is is that if you tell me what uh, you know zip code you're born in, I have a very good chance of of predicting whether you go to a very good um, public school or a private school. And whether you will score well on the SATs because you have access to uh, SAT prep and what uh, college or university, you know, or what tier of college or university could it all just based upon your zip code. And when U.S. attorneys are saying this is a real fraud, this is not like donating money to a school and getting your kid in that way. I think there's a real sort of like misunderstanding about what um, is uh, angering people in this country. Well, I do, too. And I th- it's funny because, you know, there's all this corruption. There's this layer after layer after after fraud and corruption in government and in all the elite institutions. Uh, but there's something about that scandal, the, the cheating scandal, um, <laughs> that I think may be more illustrative to more, more people than those things. You know, I mean, I think people sort of go, yeah, politics, it's all corrupt. I think this is something that average parents sitting around, you know, uh, filling out, uh, helping their kids fill out their applications and trying to put money away to help their kids go to, go to college and looking at, you know, how difficult and expensive it is and the student people looking at their student loans that they're having to pay every month for year upon year upon year. This is something that touches many, many millions of people. And here you have a group of people, and they're not even at the top echelon, right? The top echelon just do exactly what you said. Right. They just buy a building or do a donation or, you know, offer some kind of a a grant for something. And, you know, so Jared Kushner being the top example that I think everybody thought of when this whole thing came up, his father, I mean, Jared Kushner is really was a very, very mediocre uh, student and is a very mediocre mind and had no chance of getting into an elite university. And his father, who had no attachment to Harvard, by the way, it wasn't like a legacy or anything or somebody who, you know, it, it wasn't even the old boys club. This was a strictly financial transaction. He gave $2.5 million to, to Harvard and they let his son come. I mean, that's just a good, to me, that's just a bribe. I don't see any other way to look at it. There's nothing there that indicates that there was any reason beyond just the money that allowed Jared Kushner to go to Harvard. And this was written about many years ago. Back in 2006, I think a guy named Daniel Old Golden wrote a book about these legacy students and how this is all done on the elite level. And, you know, the, the benefits that you get from getting a degree from one of those, those schools, it, it's enormous. I mean, just the, the contacts, the prestige, the ability to get jobs throughout your life, um, make money, you know, be part of that, you know, club of elite students uh, and graduates is, is, is invaluable. And these people just, they, you know, they have the money to go buy in. Now, these other people, they're, you know, they are big, they were, they were business moguls, Hollywood people, people who obviously had money, but they apparently didn't have that kind of money, the kind of right. money where they could just go buy a building. You know, I mean, they were, they're, they're uh, you know, they're wealthy, and by my standards, vastly wealthy <laughs> compared to me. But, you know, I think I don't think they thought of themselves as being that wealthy, and maybe a lot of people in this country sort of look at them and think, well, you know, they're, they're well off, but not, you know, among the super rich. And, and, but yet, you know, they're striving to get that elite status, to get into that thing, and just to go for such a crude form of fraud. I mean, this kind of stuff where they were doing photoshops of their kids, you know, pretending to be athletes and cheating just blatantly on the SATs and bribing, you know, coaches in, in various colleges. I mean, that's the kind of thing where you think, 
you know, these people really assumed they could get away with this. They just assumed they, they had no, that there was no risk to them, that this was just fine. They were, they were blatantly breaking yep. uh, any kind of ethical rules, much less the law. And, and the rest of America were just sitting there looking at that, well, who do you people think you are? You know, who do you people think you are? So it, it, it just lends itself to sort of a, a, an examination of, of what is going on in this country, this, that what you say is this lack of accountability, this kind of elite impunity, this, this, you know, a, this you know, ongoing sort of sense that the rules are different for average people um, and, than they are for these folks, that they can get away with murder and the rest of us have to play by the rules. And, and as you say, though, I mean, as you discuss the characteristics of those people, the, it, it, it sounds like Donald Trump. It yeah. sounds like I mean, it sounds like all of these people who uh, have been operating and they're like you say, they're also probably right, because for the most part, they're able to just d- go around, do this, throw money at stuff, make everything, you know, problems go away that they're, uh, you know, it's impossible to to touch them in any fashion. There's nothing they can do that in any way, um, you know, they would be held to, to uh, account over. Uh, so. um the, this is, uh, you know, this is this is indicative of, of, of a bigger problem, I think. And uh, I, I, I I think it's a mistake. You know, there's obviously like a lot of, um, you know, I guess uh, sexiness to the story. But I think it's a mistake to sort of perceive this as um, the, the real story. Again, uh, this is sort of like Madoff versus the financial crisis. Right. Um, right. There are. You know, uh, we cannot see the lives that are implicated, uh, not by the the fraud that these 39 individuals committed, but the entire system that makes it harder. Um, you know, the way that we fund uh, lower education, you know, K through 12, uh, the lack of UP, uh, you know, universal uh, pre-K and daycare. Uh, all of these things are implicated, it seems to me, when someone applies to college and gets in. So uh, it's it's really um, uh, it's shocking. And it's certainly of this era. I will say that very uh, much of this era. Now, um, we just have a, a minute and a half here before we go into the to the next segment. But I want to talk about uh, another thing that seems to be of this era. And we can uh, talk more about it in, like I say, in the next segment. But the Republicans are now negotiating and about to uh, uh, come to uh, some type of resolution on a bill that purports to claw back power for Congress. But in fact, it is a bill that allows Donald Trump to get away with his emergency order Yep. And does it in such a way that it makes conservatives feel comfortable that no Democrat can tread on these in these footsteps again. We got to take <laughs> a quick break. When we come back, let's talk about this uh, okay. because it is um, highly uh, problematic, it seems to me. And, of course, very typical of the behavior of the Republican Party in the Trump era. I'm Sam Cedar. This is Ring of Fire Radio. We'll be right back. <laughs> 